If I ever leave you, baby, you can say I told you so. And if I ever hurt you, you know I hurt myself as well. Is that any way for a man to carry on? Do you think I want my loved one gone? Said I love you more than you'll ever know. Hey, you know, I want the Chadwick Boseman CD. Come, I know, but it's like, whoa. The reality of this show, you know, ends in song. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to ask you to. You'll never sing a James Brown song yeah. for it. I just accepted it. It's just weird when, you know. It's okay, you don't have to. I don't have to you sing. Can, no, you have to sing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Yeah, come on. You're a child. This guy has taken on everything. He's fearless. You're Black Panther. You, you couldn't shy away from a little bit of something. Mm. Let me see what, let me see what, what I'm saying. Uh. Mm-hmm. 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 Grandma's hands clapped in church on Sunday morning. Grandma's hands played the tambourine so well. Grandma's hands used to issue out a warning. She say, Chad, don't you run so fast. It might fall on a piece of glass. Might be snakes there in that grass, Grandma's hands. I love Grandma's hands. Now I want to sing it again and sing it better. <laughs> no, I was we trying to want figure. the first no, and the way it was. No, no it's take two. So, so, no, no take two <laughs> on this show. We don't do take two. Get on ya. Get on ya. The favorite, I, I don't I don't have one now because it's too many. I've heard too many songs now. Um, it just switches all the time. So my favorite one right now, uh, one of them is Lost Someone, um, The Payback, uh, Can't Stand It. I mean, it just always switches all the time. So. I, I like I like so much music, like um, I couldn't pin it down to one person anyway. But uh, he definitely is somebody like I appreciate him way more than I did before. Uh, yeah, it was I mean the dance training was was uh, extremely intense. I mean it was like five hours a, a day of official rehearsal. Um, officially five days a week, but I would rehearse, you know, on the weekends and I would re rehearse in addition to, to those five days, five hours. I would go home at night and, you know, sweat some more. Uh, we had two months of that and we started shooting. Uh, some vocal um, work with a cat named Ron Anderson, who's worked with a lot of musical artists. But uh, he helped me not only with the, the singing aspect, but also the, you know, changing the shape of the vocal cords to speak as well. So um, it, was, it was a lot of work, just a lot of research as well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I would, I would, uh, I would have moments that, that uh, where something would, would click and it, you know, whether it be vocally, um, you know, I would wake up in the middle of the night and, and with, with some ideas about how to, to switch. You know, you, a lot of times when you're working on things, you exhaust it, you exhaust the muscles, and it's not until later that you really understand what those muscles are doing. 
so my voice was that way and definitely um, the body was that way and in terms of uh, who he was you know it was just a process of ruminating over over certain things that were going on in his life and how they you know parallel with the uh, with the script uh, I think um, the Boston Garden um, footage would, would be the one that I looked at the most. Uh, it mainly because it was it's, it was something that that like this this biopic is something where we a lot of times could interpret the moment. That was a moment that we had to get exactly, like pretty much exactly right, like because the dynamics between the police and the kids at that concert, um, if you got it wrong, you're, you're, you're blaming, you don't think you can blame either side for what happened. Um, you know, the kids were just trying to, to enjoy a performance after a traumatic event with uh, Martin Luther King being assassinated um, prior to that moment. The police um, were misinterpreting who, what those kids wanted and what was going to happen, partially because they're black and partially because of uh, the fact that, it, you know, riots were happening everywhere, you know, throughout the country. So. Um, that was a lot to get right, and I think I watched that footage more than anything else, just because there were so many dynamics there. Um, but it definitely was the most striking to me. Well, it's 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 you know Ferguson is is you guys are just seeing that now, but you know the potential for Ferguson. I. I get stopped by cops all the time because of the car I drive or you know I've been I've been in New York and experienced stop and frisk and had book bag had books in my book bag and been asked um, you know why are you carrying around books are you a student you're not a student why do you have books and been harassed and do you have drugs and for no reason you know so Ferguson is is just uh, what's happening there is, is is not new to me. It's new to y'all. You know. <laughs> Take us over the road Man made the train To carry the heavy load Man made the electrolytes Narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass An American slave Chapter 1 I was born in Tuckahoe, near Hillsboro, and about 12 miles from Easton in Talbot County, Maryland. I have no accurate knowledge of my age, never having seen any authentic record containing it. By far, the larger part of the slaves know as little of their ages as horses know of theirs, and it is the wish of most masters within my knowledge to keep their slaves thus ignorant. I do not remember to have ever met a slave who could tell of his birthday. They seldom come nearer to it than planting time, harvest time, cherry time, spring time, or fall time. A want of information concerning my own was a source of unhappiness to me even during childhood. The white children could tell their ages. I could not tell why I ought to be deprived of the same privilege. 
I was not allowed to make any inquiries of my master concerning it. He deemed all such inquiries on the part of a slave improper and impertinent and evidence of a restless spirit. The nearest estimate I can give makes me now between 27 and 28 years of age. I come to this from hearing my master say sometime during 1835, I was about 17.